Have you seen a more perfect thing? I don't think so. I got me coffee again and it is green this time. Not making any sense and I'm okay with that. I'm sure he's got some really solid forearms. You can see a three, is it a four, is it a three, is it a four? I don't know. I am living at the high of the fan road train and I'm not ready to get off yet. Welcome to my new obsession. Welcome to my new personality. Recently got an insider information and I wanted to let you guys know that the- Hello everyone. If you're new here, my name is Mel and welcome to week one of Realmathon. If you guys have no idea what Realmathon is, it is a month long readathon hosted by Cassidy from Covers with Cassidy. It is a competitive based readathon and I will be hosting Team Shadows with Lexi from Books with Lexi. This morning I did a clip in my car because I was so excited. It was 6.30 in the morning. We were ready to go. I was going to start reading and it was pouring down rain. So I just wanted to come on here and give you guys a little bit of a prettier intro. Team Shadows gets extra points for reading books with black covers. So I'm going to be spending this entire week reading books with black covers. I have stacks on stacks on stacks of books that I'm hoping to get to this week. I don't know how many I'm going to get to, but fingers crossed it's a lot because we need all of the points. So I guess let's cut back to this morning where I tell you guys what I'm going to be picking up first for the readathon. Good morning, friends. This clip may not be usable because it's pouring outside, which I feel like is perfect for today because today is Realmathon today. Today is the very start of one of my favorite readathons of the year, and that is Realmathon. This week, I'm going to be leaning hard into our bonus prompt, and I'm going to be reading a bunch of black covered books. I have a whole list of things to choose from, so many things that I can read, but I don't know how many of those I'm going to get to. We're just going to see how many I can. The first one I'm going to be starting with is Air to Rise. This one is a fantasy romance that I've heard pretty good things about. It has a black cover and this author is going to be at a polycon and she has a special edition closing today. So I need to make a pretty good dent in it and decide whether or not I want to get to the special edition if I like the book enough for that. I think if I give it a four star or higher, I will. And if I don't, then I'll probably pass on it. But I'm going to start that audiobook. It's 6 a.m. Well, actually 6.30 in the morning. And we're getting a super early start to the day. I'm going to go grab some coffee and let's get this thing rolling. I'm finally home from work. It was a pretty good day. We didn't really have a whole lot going on today and I had some help on an already pretty light day. So I just chilled and listened to a little of An Air Comes to Rise. I also had to run a couple of errands. So I was actually able to get a pretty decent bit listened to and I'm currently about 34% of the way in. And I'm liking this one. I don't know if it's gonna be good enough for me to wanna get the special editions because it feels like a three star right now. Claire described it as a popcorn fantasy and I would definitely agree with that. Super easy to consume in one sitting. Writing style is fun, but there's just not a lot of depth to it right now. This is a world where there are Fae and Fae are kind of like the big bads of the realm and Faith is an orphan, but she loves sword play. And then we also have Nick who is part of the Royal Guard and he ends up finding her and realizing that she has the ability to nightwalk, which is theoretically supposed to be only something that the Fae are able to do. And it's where they're able to go into people's dreams and like pull information to put thoughts in their heads, all sorts of different things, which I'm really liking that part of the story. I think that the magic system is really cool. I like the idea of being able to go into people's dreams and being like essentially a nightmare. I think that's a lot of fun. My issue with this right now is that I feel like Faith and Nick, their banter and their relationships between one another is just not quite fun enough for me. I love a good banter. I love a good hate to love, enemies to lovers, reluctant allies to lovers. And while they have some good banter, it's just not quite wide enough for me. We're focusing a little bit more on random things and I just kind of want to either get back to them and their banter or back to the magic, the plot, but we're following her like friend a lot and I don't know, I'm just a little bit bored in those scenes. But overall, I think it's fun. I'm having a pretty decent time with it. Now that I'm home, we are on kickoff sprints. Hopefully I can get a pretty good chunk of this done. But when I got home, I also picked up the mail and I had this from Deb. And if you have been around at all, you know who Deb is. She said that she wanted to gift me something that was both shadowy for Shadow Realm, but also reminiscent of our previous team, Team Ilma or Team Llama last year. And she got me llama socks, black llama socks. Have you seen a more perfect thing? I don't think so. These are 
incredible. Thank you so much, Deb, because like I cannot wait to cozy up with my llama socks later tonight. Uh, these are just, yeah, yeah, outdid yourself, Deb. Those are incredible. I just, I had to show you guys those because I thought it was hilarious when I opened them. I think that that's everything. I need to hop back on sprints. We've got about five minutes until this current sprint ends and I have read literally nothing. So I should probably try to squeeze in a chapter so I don't just have to sit there and say, I didn't do anything again. Okay, so quick 60-ish percent update. I'm still liking this. I still feel relatively similarly to the way that I was about 30-ish percent of the way into the book. I think though I have pinpointed what my issue with this right now is. We have Nick. And I actually really like her banter with Nick. He is the presumed love interest. She has feelings for him. They have, like I said, good banter, good scenes together. But they are so few of them. And then we are spending time tons of time with, is it Jackson and Marlo who are the friends? And don't get me wrong, I love a good friend group, but their relationships just feel very flat. There doesn't seem to be a lot of depth to the friend group. And we are having constant, every single scene that she's with Jackson, it's like, oh, well, he used to like me, but he doesn't anymore because he has Marlo. And like, he doesn't see me that way. I'm like, girl, we get it. He likes Marlo. They're in a relationship. You're happy for them. Move on. And so I'm just really struggling with the repetitiveness and the frequency of those scenes compared to all of the other stuff, which I do tend to find more interesting. So I'm hoping that as we continue on further into the story, that starts to fall off a little bit. She is now in the fighting rings, which I enjoy. We're learning a little bit more about the magic. So fingers crossed, all of this starts to like become more of what I'm looking for because I just want more romanticy and banter and less like the friend zone guy. So I did not mean to finish a book today. This is a marathon, not a sprint. And I had no intention of completing a whole book today. But with that being said, I finished An Air Comes to Rise and I had a lot of fun with this book. I am gonna be giving it a three star, I think, because there were a lot of issues that I had with it. But overall, I absolutely see the popcorn read comparison and I do think that I will probably be continuing. There were a few too many conveniences for me toward the end, but I will say that the pacing did pick up for me in the ending part of it. I just felt like things were kind of just happening left and right and there wasn't a lot of setup for it. We spent way too much time on things that didn't really seem as important to me and not enough time setting up these things that were gonna be needed later on in the book. With that being said, I did like the ending. I am curious to see how everything continues. I'll probably be continuing on into book two. I don't know when I will get to it, but hopefully relatively soon. So we need to submit this book for Team Shadows. It's going to be getting 10 points for page count because it is 200 to 400 pages. It's gonna be getting 10 points for a black cover. And looking at the prompts, we have read it in multiple formats because I read it both on my Kindle and Audibly. It's a new to me author. I consider it a popcorn read. I'm considering this a required read because I needed to read it prior to a polycon and I needed to read it to find out if I wanted the special edition for a polycon. And I think that those are all the prompts it's gonna hit, which gives us a total of 30 points total and I'm going to be defending Team Shadows. So that's our first book down. I'm probably not gonna read anymore tonight because it is 8.30 and I think I'm just gonna cozy up, watch some Teen Wolf and not really worry about reading for the rest of the evening. Tomorrow, I think I'm gonna pick up Lady of Darkness as my audiobook and then Blood and Steel as my physical book because I definitely plan to annotate Blood and Steel. I have just pulled up at my mom's house. She had a pretty big surgery last week, so I'm coming to hang out with her to bring her some coffee. I got me coffee again, and it is green this time, so we are really leaning into the Melano rereads today. But on my way to her house, I did decide to pick up Lady of Darkness by Melissa Rorick. I, oh my god. You guys, like, this book is giving me five-star feels. Like, I'm already completely in love with Scarlet and Rorick. Like, they are so much fun. They hate each other and it's great. He is like brooding and constantly in control and she is determined to get him to relinquish that control. She is a stabby female main character. She is an assassin. We have training scenes. He's training her how to do, how to use a sword and like, oh my gosh, this book is giving me five star feels in every way. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to hang out with mom. Uh, then I cannot wait to get back in my car so that I can continue to listen to this book because... I'm loving it. I'm loving it.
I am home. I got to hang out with mom and honestly the cats because the cats are where it's at, obviously. She's got two cats that are very different and much more cuddly than my own. Brand is like the queen of the house. She does what she wants. She hangs out when she wants, like typical cat behavior. But my mom's cats are just very like up in your business, wanna lay on you, wanna be like around you and it's great. But on the way to and from her house, I was able to get about halfway into Lady of Darkness and you guys, you guys, I'm having such a good time with this. Like this is giving me five star feels. I think that there was a little bit of a place kind of about 30-ish percent where it lulled a little bit, but overall, like I'm just, I'm loving these characters and their relationships to one another. And I think that this world is really cool. There's actually like a vampires and shifters in this as well. The magic system and the way that the world and the kingdoms are all set up is just really interesting to me. We've gotten a lot of reveals in the last probably hundred pages. While I did see most of those reveals coming, I still think that they made perfect sense to the story and I'm still having a great time and their banter and just their moments together. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm having such a good time. And I, I honestly, like, I don't know how I'm supposed to continue on with other series. There's so much I want to read this week, like literally so much I want to read. But now I'm like, when I finish this, am I just want to going to want to go straight into the second book? I don't know. I'm not a series binger. This doesn't happen to me, but I'm having a fantastic time with this. So we will see what happens. I immediately put all of them on my wish list so that I will have them easily accessible and ready to go when I finish this. And yeah, I have nothing else to say. I'm gushing. I am not making any sense and I'm okay with that. <laughs> Update you guys because I have officially finished Lady of Darkness. I mean, how beautiful is this bookmark with this book? And I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this book. I would highly recommend this if you are a Throne of Glass fan, but you want like Throne of Glass for adults. The setup definitely gives me those vibes. I loved Scarlet. She's a super stabby female main character. Her relationship with Riker was just so much fun. There was good banter. I wouldn't necessarily say that they are like true enemies to lovers, but the way that their relationship kind of goes on a serious journey throughout this whole book, I just had so much fun with. I do think I'm probably gonna give this one a four star, a solid four star. So I just wanted to come in really quickly and tell you guys that after I put Lady of Darkness through my spreadsheet, I don't know what I was thinking. It was a five star. I so much so enjoyed that. And I was, I was going back through the spreadsheet, typing things in, remembering what I loved about that book. There's no doubt that it was a five star for me. I loved it so much. I thought it was so, so good. And I just needed to correct my error from previous where I said that I gave it a four star because honestly, five star feels. The main reason for that is because sometimes the pacing was just a little bit off for me. There were moments where I felt like we really were just doing a lot of talking at each other and not necessarily moving the plot forward. There were a few plot holes, a few inconsistencies with Scarlet and the way that she would handle things, but overall, thoroughly enjoyed this. Highly, highly recommend. Like this was so good, so much fun. I cannot wait to continue on in the series. And now I have a dilemma, like do I continue or do I move on to one of the books that I was planning for this week? I'm not really sure. I think I'm going to try moving on to A Court This Cruel and Lovely, but I don't know if I'll stick with it because I could end up going into Lady of Shadows. Like I literally have it downloaded and ready to go. As you guys probably noticed, I did not pick up Blood and Steel yet. I got completely sucked into this. And even though this was just supposed to be my audiobook, which is fantastic, by the way, narration top tier. I ended up just reading this on sprints while I was at home and not just using it as my audiobook. I really enjoyed following along with this, but I think it's just a good solid straight audiobook as well. This also gets so many points for Team Shadows. It's 518 pages, so it gets us 20 points for page count. It also is a black cover, so it gets us another 10 points for black cover. It's not a school setting and it is not got a building on the cover, unfortunately. And then for prompts, we actually got a pretty good bit of points for prompts. I decided to go with attack prompts for this one and I asked my patrons who they thought that I should attack and by emoji poll, they chose Team Blood. So we are going to end up getting quite a few points for Team Blood. I was able to get negative two points for Seduce Arrival because this book is a romanticy. I was able to get negative four points for intentionally getting someone lost because the Wheel of Doom actually picked this book, which 
could not have been more perfect. And then I got negative four points for cutting class to spy. It's in my video. Cassidy said, host perks, I can count it. Negative five points for incriminating an enemy because she does use an initial, it's K Rorick. And then negative five for decode a hidden message. This is definitely a shadows related word in the title, darkness, shadows, they just go hand in hand together. So with that being said, that gives us a total of negative 28 points against Team Blood, as well as a positive 20 points for Team Shadows because page count is always positive, which I feel like is a super solid success. This is a win. I may have to continue on the series just to get Shadows more points. I don't really have any other updates for you guys. I do think I'll probably start a around so cruel and lovely, a curse so cruel and lovely on my way to work in the morning. It is one of my longer drive days, so I think I can make a pretty good dent in it. But other than that, I'm about to go take a nice long hot bath and just enjoy the rest of the evening. Good morning and happy Monday, friends. I'm headed into work and I think I'm going to be starting a court this cruel and lovely this morning. I really struggled whether or not to go straight into Lady of Shadows, but I do think that I want to try to prioritize some of Polycon authors and I have a special edition of this pre-ordered. So I really do need to like get on it and read it. So I've decided to pick this one up. Also think I'm going to bring my Kindle and if I get time at lunch today, may read a little bit of Blood and Steel. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, those are my plans for today. I don't really wanna to go to work, but but it's something, it's something we gotta do. We're going to ignore the fact that my house is a little bit messy behind me. It's been, it's been a long while. It's been a long while and I have not done laundry. I have not done dishes. I have not cleaned my house. So we're, we're gonna ignore all of that. I do have a reading update for you guys. First, I wanted to show you though, when I got home from work, I had packages. So I wanted to open those really quickly for you guys and then we'll chat about A Court This Cruel and Lovely. Yeah, I can never get the name of that thing right. Um, but the first book that I wanted to show you guys, I've actually already opened because I didn't know what it was. And it was a gift from the lovely Clementine. She got me House of Gilded Nightmares by Aurora Gray. Yes, Clementine, I would love to do a buddy read of this. It's really short. And I feel like I might could count that for 50% black. I don't know, but maybe this will be a Peace Talks read because it is only like 300 pages with really pretty like illustrations in it. Even the like headings of the normal book have these pretty like little things up here. It's a really pretty book. But anyway, this is about a Shadow Fae guardian, the future queen of nightmares and the dark destiny they share. Super excited to read that. Thank you so much, Clementine. Everybody has just been beyond thoughtful, incredible, amazing. And I'm not gonna gush too much because I will start crying, but you guys are wonderful. <laughs> I also have my Illumicrate package. Now, do I know what this is? No. I will tell you before I show it in case you don't want to see it. This is either Empire of the Damned or the Takeja God, which is the February, I think, book. But I'm not sure which one. Okay, so it is Takeja God. It's not Empire of the Damned. So if you don't want to see it, then click away now. Oh, this is really pretty. Okay, so this is really pretty. This is the Illumicrate book by Elizabeth May. It was one of my most anticipated releases. It sounded really good. It says, to cage a god is divine. To be divine is to rule. To rule is to destroy. It sounds really interesting. I'm trying to like stay out of the sun glare that we've got going on, but I love the like slightly different color palette they used. The stained glass window sprayed edges. So pretty. I'm afraid it's gonna be a little whimsy looking at the end papers, which is a little terrifying for me, but this is the end papers. And then this, this is the naked hardcover, which I feel like is just really, really pretty. I think they did a good job with this. Will I like it? Who knows, but I'm excited to have it and to give it a try. There's that. I'm hoping Empire of the Damned will be shipping soon because the UK release for that was at the end of February. So honestly, I thought that that's what this one would be, but oh well. Um, okay, so let's chat about A Court This Cruel and Lovely. I am approximately, I'm all over the place today, sorry guys. I am about 50, pa 50 pages, 50% 50 into A Court This Cruel and Lovely, and I'm having a really fun time with it. Is this book anything like super unique and groundbreaking and pushing boundaries? Absolutely not. <laughs> it is Trope City over here, but 
oddly compelling. This is about a world where back, way back when, there was a big war between the humans and the Fae, and in order to try to defeat the Fae and push them back, the king has said that he would give all of his people's magic over to the gods. So now every time a new, pa new baby is born, all of their magic is given over to the gods in order to strengthen their lands. At 25 years of age, they're given a little sliver of that magic back as like a thank you, but not all of it. And our main character, unfortunately, has magic still. She's always had magic, but that is forbidden in the lands. And if they find that you still have magic, you are taken to the king's dungeons and then I think burned at the stake. So it's pretty heavy repercussions for continuing to have magic. So she's always been in hiding when one day guards come, they are looking for people that still have magic and she has to escape. She finds a group of mercenaries that agree to have like mutual benefits of getting both of them into the city. She agrees to help them out where she meets Lorian, I believe is his name, who is like the leader of the mercenaries and things just kind of go from there. I am really honestly having a lot of fun with this book. It's not the most, like I said, groundbreaking thing that I've ever read. I definitely struggled a little bit in the beginning with the writing and kind of the fact that she seemed a little bit juvenile to me. But as we're going and as things are continuing to develop, I am liking her a lot more. I think she's growing up. She's coming into her own. The magic system is really cool. I like her powers. I think the biggest issue for me right now is that I don't completely buy their romance. And that's a little frustrating because this is a romantic-y. So like I should be all in on their romance and while I have some good banter and it's not that that's bothering me I don't know what it is but there's something about it that just doesn't make me fully believe the two of them together we are at a point where they're not together anymore they've been separated which honestly I don't mind I like it when I get to know my female main character without the guy kind of brooding in the corner but I don't know we'll see like I said I like her a lot more as we continue to go on and get to know her better so I'm hoping as things progress I will start to like him more and their relationship more because right now he just feels a little bit bland to me he doesn't really feel like he's got a lot of like oomph to him and so I need him to be I don't know what I need him to be, but I need him to give me something and he's not giving it right now, but I'm having fun. So that's what really matters. I think that's everything for now though. I'm going to package the February Patreon stickers on sprints tonight. And then I am going to probably finish the design for the March bookmarks. I do um, alternating stickers and bookmarks on my top tier of my Patreon. And we've been doing collage bookmarks and they're so much fun to make. So I need to make the spring collage bookmark tonight so that I can get all of that like sent off to the printer and get it back before the end of March because I should have already done that and I haven't done it yet so I'm gonna go do that. with Lexi and I have started Blood and Steel by Helen Schur and I want to give you guys kind of an initial update. I'm only about 75 pages into this book so far. It's following Althea who is an alchemist in this world where wraiths are closing in on the realms but many years ago there was a prophecy that a woman would wield a sword and bring death to the realms and since then they've prevented any woman from taking up steel. There are also these war swords of Thesmar which are basically elite warriors. There was one last one that passed the right called Wilder. And Wilder was the youngest one, but now there are only three of them left. And like I said, the race are slowly closing in. Althea just really wants to be a warrior. That's what she's always wanted to do. So she practices in secret with a forbidden blade until one day she loses the blade and on her way to try to find it, she gets caught by Wilder and her mentor 
encourages them to allow her to, to petition to be a sword holder, which basically means she would just be able to fight. Not necessarily a war sword, but just able to fight. That's about where I am right now. I will say in the very beginning of this, I was not completely vibing with it as much as I wanted. I read A Slaying the Shadow Prince for 72 hours and so much so enjoyed it. It was almost a five star for me. Their banter was great. I really enjoyed the writing. I liked the world. I liked the plot. I thought it was just really, really good. And in this one, the writing just felt not quite as polished to me in the beginning. And I was struggling a little bit. I tried to do the audiobook. I didn't really like the audiobook. So I went back to reading it physically. And I also felt like Althea was just reading kind of young to me. She's supposed to be 24 years old. She knows that she's going to die on her 27th birthday. So it's very clear how old she is. And I don't know, she just felt like she was reading really young, really kind of, I don't know, 17 year old, take on the world, think she's indestructible kind of thing. Not necessarily a young woman that's been through things in life and has kind of learned things and is trying to deal with hardships. She just seemed to kind of fly off the handle and not really think anything through, which may just be her personality and that's fine. But she just read a little younger than I was expecting 24 to read, especially after reading Slaying the Shadow Prince. However, I would say about 40, 50 pages when Wilder comes onto the scene and we start to get a little bit more of the plot and we're doing less of her just kind of running around the camp meeting people and doing things that seems to be getting better. So I'm hoping that she will continue to grow. She will continue to develop because she has the potential to be a character I could really, really love and relate to. I just need her to grow up a little teensy tiny bit. Wilder, I quite like. He's brooding. He has a man bun. I'm sure he's got some really solid forearms. You guys know how I love a good forearm. And he is just not at all impressed by Althea. He thinks that she is like a little girl who doesn't know what she's doing and could not possibly. And I'm excited to watch her prove him wrong. I think that that's going to be a lot of fun to watch their relationship. They don't like each other, which as you guys know, is my favorite way to start a relationship. I'm good with them hating each other and really having to work for it. It adds to the tension and it really works for me. So, so far, I would say that I am really enjoying this. I'm excited to continue reading it. And I just, I guess, needed to get through those first like 40, 50 setup pages because now it's going a lot better. I am going to be annotating this one. I have my tabs all picked out and ready to go. What I've been doing, and this is actually my new preferred way to annotate, um, Cassidy recommended doing this, and I really, really like it, is I annotate on my Kindle. So basically just highlight things that I like. And then I go back and do the actual annotations once I'm getting about 20, 25% of the way in and then about every quarter of the book because it just allows me to make sure that I've got the right tabs. It allows me to take my time a little bit and really be able to enjoy those passages and annotate in a way that I want. My biggest problem with annotating, the reason that I had never done it before was because I felt like I was being taken out of the story every time I had to stop to highlight, to underline, to tab something. And doing it on my Kindle, I don't really have to stop very long. And so I don't feel like it's taking me out of the story. I still feel like I'm gliding through it, but I get to do the pretty annotations. I get to relive it as I'm rereading and going through and tapping everything. So I've really been enjoying that and I'm excited to see how this looks once it's all tabbed up. I think that that's everything for tonight. I'm probably not going to update you guys anymore. I am going to read a little bit more, but it is 740. I need to wash my hair. I hate washing my hair. And I'm going to finish up sprints with Lexi. It's Ramathon. We go hard during Ramathon. There will be many, many, many sprints. And I can honestly not believe how much I have read so far. I've really been in kind of a funk with reading and just not really wanting to pick up books. But I honestly can say this week, I'm not like forcing myself to read. I'm not trying to get through a bunch of books. I'm just genuinely enjoying what I'm reading and it is such a good feeling. Like five minutes because I ran home really quickly at lunch to bring Ollie home from the groomer. He had to get a haircut today, but on my way to pick him up and back home, I was able to finish A Court This Cruel and Lovely. I had a really fun time with this. I'm really not sure what I'm going to rate it though, because in some aspects it was a three star and other aspects it was a solid four star. And so I'm like, is it a three? Is it a four? Is it a three? Is it a four? I don't know. I think my enjoyment could push this up to a low four star, 
but I'm a little unsure. I think my biggest holdup on this was just the romance. This definitely is a plot forward romanticy and I really enjoyed the plot. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's kind of like a semi heist prison escape while also being court politics. And I think there's gonna be a rebellion that plays more into this later on in the books. And I had a lot of fun with it, but the romance was a little lackluster for me. I just wanted the guy to be a little bit less cookie cutter. He just felt like every other fan row guy ever. And I needed him to have a little bit more personality. They really didn't have a ton of interactions with one another. And I just needed him to be a little bit, have a little bit more to him than that. I also felt like their relationship progressed a little quickly for as few scenes as they seemed to have with one another. So I'm just hoping that there gets to be a little bit more depth throughout their relationship as we move on into future books. It did get better as we continued along, which is what's kind of pushing me toward a four star because I started to feel their relationship a little bit more. I started to enjoy their banter and their interactions more as the story progressed. So I think I'm going to give this a four star, which means I've had two four stars back to back and I am having the best time this week. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what's gotten in the water. This was not supposed to be a romantic vlog, but here we are. And I am just, I'm having, I'm having the best. Next week, we'll get a little bit more back into the epic fantasy side of things, but I am living the high of the fan row train and I'm not ready to get off yet. So I realized when I got home earlier and checked in with you guys, I did not tell you how many points that A Court This Cruel and Lovely got or what I used it for any. So I wanna come on here really quick and tell you guys what I ended up using for the prompts for this. It is going to get us a positive 20 points because it is over 500 pages. It also gets us a positive 10 points for having a black cover. And then I used new school supplies. It is new to my TBR, so that was plus two. Math class, this has 22 letters in the title, so plus three. Snack time, a popcorn read. To me, this does read very fast, very fun kind of read. So to me, it's a popcorn read. So that's plus three. Set up your schedule. I am considering this a required read. It is in a Polycon author and I did buy a special edition to pick up at a Polycon. So I really need to read it before a Polycon. So another plus three. And then Teacher's Pet, Cassidy gave this a four star, five star, four star, I think. And so this gets another five points for Team Shadows. So that gets me a total of plus 46 defense points for Team Shadows, which is a solid book. I've also been reading a little bit more of Blood and Steel. I'm still having a great time with it. It feels like a four star too. Not gonna lie, I squealed when he gave her his last clean shirt. I know that's so silly, but like, Loved it, loved it. I'll check in with you guys once I've made a little bit further of a dent, maybe around halfway into Blood and Steel, and I'm hoping it will also get us some really good points for Team Shadows. Happy Wednesday, I think it's Wednesday. I am so tired, I'm trying to like get up and get moving. It's seven o'clock in the morning, and I need coffee very, very badly. I've been on a cold brew kick at home lately. I don't really know why, but it's just not, it's hitting different than the hot coffee, you know? But while I'm doing this, I want to tell you guys that I have decided that I am going to be listening to Lady of Shadows next. I've just been thinking about this series ever since I finished Lady of Darkness and I just, I want to pick it back up again. I have been thinking about Scarlet and Riker and I just, I don't think that I can go another day without knowing what happens next. So welcome to my new obsession. Welcome to my new personality. And we're gonna see if I end up binging this entire series before the month's over. It's highly possible. I've got the audio downloaded and ready to go from Hoopla. I have my coffee and I'm late. So I'll talk to you guys later. Happy Thursday, friends. I really, really, really quickly, really quickly need to do an update. It, I, as always, I'm on the way to work, but I forgot to update you guys last night because I finished Blood and Steel. I have no clue what I'm gonna rate this one. I thought if I sat on it overnight, I would be able to tell you guys, but I think for me, it's probably like a 3.75. I don't give out 3.75s, but it feels like it's not really a three star. It was better than a three star for me, but it wasn't a four star either. So I'm trying to decide, do I round it up? Do I round it down? I liked this book. There were some five star moments in here. There were some things I absolutely adored. And then there were some things that really bugged me too. I, I'm not sure. Like, as I was going back and annotating this, I did finish my annotations. There were moments where I was like, man, I love these two characters together. This is a four star. And then I noticed the repetitiveness of it and things like that. And I was like, well, maybe, maybe it's not a four star. So I don't really know. It's, it, it feels like a 3.75. So my official rating is a 3.75. <laughs> but I, 
but I'll, I'll figure out what I'm going to do on Goodreads later. I think the main things that I loved about this were Wilder and Thea's relationship and their interactions together. I really enjoyed their banter. I liked the two of them together. That's when I noticed Thea being her strongest was when she was with him, when she was having to do things on her own. Don't get me wrong. I adored the friendship group in here. I actually really, really liked it. And I think if this had been presented to me as 18 year olds, maybe even 19 year olds, I could have looked over some of the things that annoyed me. But because she was presented to me as 24, 25, I was like, oh girl, you, you read way too young, way too naive, which she is naive to be fair. So I guess that makes sense. But like she is constantly saying, I'm not a girl, I'm a woman, I've been through things, but she didn't act like it. So that was a little hard for me. I was being told one thing and shown something different. I noticed it, like I said, more in the friend groups. This is a school setting, so I don't know if it was sometimes the school setting dynamic that made it read a little younger, but overall, I, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed the plot. As I talk about it more, I think I might give it a four star because I did really enjoy their relationships, and I can, I guess, see why Thea reads more young because she's never been out in the world before. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, that, that was the main thing that bugged me in this was a little bit of the writing, although I do think that that's going to get stronger and stronger as books go on because I didn't really notice it in To Slay a Shadow Prince. And I think Thea is going to really come into her own. The ending I quite enjoyed. I saw it coming, but at the same time, I'm glad we went there. This book pretty much ends where I thought it was going to begin. This is not what I was expecting. I was expecting her to become Wilder's mentee because I keep I kept hearing this was like mentor mentee relationship and be at the Warriors of Thesmar learning and that's the side of things that I thought this was going to go it's not it's very much so like a prequel to all of that which is fine it just wasn't what I was expecting so I'm hoping she really comes into her own I'm hoping that things really take a turn and I start to love this rather than just like it Okay, um, I've been talking for way, 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 way too long. Quickly, I wanted to let you guys know I have started Lady of Shadows. I am still thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this. This definitely has mental health rep in it, um, some depression, anxiety, trauma representation. For the most part, I think this is done really, really well. There's one teeny tiny little thing that bothers me, and I will talk about that later. We are getting several new POVs. We're getting a new narrator in this for the male POV, and I'm quite enjoying it. So I'm excited to continue on in this today. It's going to be my primary focus before we end the vlog tonight. So Editing Mel wanted to come on and tell you that I forgot to mention my points when I was talking to you guys this morning about Blood and Steel. I did decide to defend with this one. I want to try to defend as much as possible. I ended up getting 20 points for a page count, 10 points for a black cover, 10 points for a school setting, and 14 points for props, which totaled out to be 54 defense points, which, which I think is super solid. Hello friends, I just wanted to check in because I have a reading update for you guys. I am actually about halfway into Lady of Shadows and I did not mean to get this far in without giving you guys an update on this, but I've just been listening and vibing and here we are. I did want to quickly say though, before I do a reading update, that I have some information that I wanted to share with you guys. Sorry, I had to let the dog back in if the angle changed. But we've recently gotten insider information and I wanted to let you guys know that the team that has attacked Shadows the most is Team Blood. Blood apparently has it out for Shadows. I don't know what's wrong with them. I don't know why they have it out for us, but apparently they do. So Lady of Shadows, quick update on this. This one picks up pretty much exactly where the first book left off and I'm really enjoying it. I will say that this one definitely focuses more on like mental health. My dog is being very dramatic. Um, I will say that this one focuses more on like mental health than it does much in the way of the plot. We definitely have a lot going on between Soren and Scarlet and kind of their relationship. This one is significantly more romance relationship heavy than the previous book. And I'm liking it, but I do feel like up to the halfway point, it has just been really, really slow for me. I am struggling with the pacing. I'm still enjoying it. I still like their relationship. I still like the character interactions. I still think the world is cool and the writing is good, but I am struggling with them a little and the fact that that's mostly all we're focusing on. They have pretty good communication, but there's just been 
Every single conflict seems to be a miscommunication trope, which is not my favorite. He's withholding things from her and I am struggling with Scarlett because she's like, I love her character. I think that her passion and her just ability to withstand things and some of the traumas that she's gone through is incredible, but I'm really having a hard time with how she seems to just like get raging pissed off mad she'll go cold and she's like i want to destroy you and then in five minutes she's over it because somebody told her that she was being told her the reason behind everything and she stops being so dramatic and so i'm just I, i'm having a hard time with that it'd be fine if it was once but it's been multiple times where something's happened she doesn't like the way that it's said she goes into this raging demanding fit flies off the handle and then in five minutes is completely over it so I, i'm i'm having a little hard a little bit of a harder time with that i don't remember that really being the case in book one but i have heard that book one and two are people's typically least favorite so i'm still enjoying the series and Enough. I think I just let in a mosquito. I'm still enjoying the series enough that I absolutely want to continue. I plan to continue pretty shortly after finishing this one. And I've also heard from Deb that she also had very similar issues to the beginning of this book and loved the second half. So fingers crossed that I feel the exact same way. I'm going to go back to reading. I would love to finish it tonight. So if I do, I will see you guys in a bit. So the first week of Ramathon has now come to an end and I've had such a good week, you guys. I cannot believe how many black covers I managed to read as well as how many good books I was able to get in this week. I know you guys are probably thinking, Mel, you didn't update us on Lady of Shadows. That's because I've not quite finished it yet. So we are gonna roll that into next week's vlog, but I am having a really good time with that as well. So I've had multiple four stars, a three star, a five star. It has been such a good week and I cannot wait to continue on into next week, continue on reading, getting more points for Team Shadows. I think that's really all that I have to wrap this week up for you guys. Next week I'm going to be I think focusing on books with buildings on the cover as well as any additional points that I can manage to get in so stay tuned for that. If you guys are participating in Realmathon let me know what team you're on down below and if you're having a good reading week. If you just want to let me know that you were here hanging out leave me a black heart emoji for black covers. I do a lot of weekly and themed reading vlogs, so if you guys want to check that out, I will leave it up here. As always, links to my Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads are all down in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you want to, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!